What's up guys, welcome to a new video. So in this one, I wanna go through five biggest mistakes I see beginners making then when they start dropshipping and when they start running Facebook ads. Within each of these points, there's like another three to five points. So in reality then, there's more like 15 to 20 different mistakes that I see beginners making then when they start dropshipping. Now, before we jump into the presentation, just a quick message. I am giving away a free one-to-one -one call in this video. I do in every single video. So for multiple chances every week to win that, just make sure you hit that subscribe button and to enter the competition then it's really easy to do all you have to do is simply hit the like button just below this video and leave a comment down below in terms of your comment it could be whatever you want just comment ecom it can be a video suggestion or some sort of question about drop shipping i always answer every single question so i will get back to you and finally then just make sure you tune into my next video where the winner will be announced and with that being said thanks for tuning in i hope you enjoy it and let's get straight into it. Number one then is not focusing on the customer. Now I know it sounds boring and cliche, but it's 100% true and for the following reasons then. Um, without any, well for starters then, without customers then you have no business. The more customers you have, the more money you're going to make. And to get more customers then, you need to provide a good experience for them. So who better to ask for advice then than the people who are your customers, the people who see your ads or visit your site. And here's just a few different methods then in which you can implement and use, um, which will help you gain that feedback and ultimately provide a better experience for your customers. There's a post I saved on my Instagram. It was Warren Buffett doing an interview. And he said the number one thing that all businesses should be doing and thinking about constantly is how do I improve the experience for my customers? Because if you can provide a better experience, better service, better products than anybody else, then why would they go anywhere else? So just keep that in mind then when you're designing your business and speaking to your customers. So number one then is post comments on your ads slash talk to your customers. So this is something I do on every single ad, even in the ad in which I advertise my course, you can, if you've seen it, you'll know that the last comment on that will always be me asking people if they have any questions. And you should do the same in e-commerce when you're dropshipping too, because customers like to see a business that's active and a business that cares about its customers. And by talking to them in a friendly manner and professional at the same time, that will only come across as a good thing and it will only come across as trustworthy as well. The biggest obstacle you will have to overcome as a new business is people trusting you. And this is a great way then to overcome that obstacle and show your customers that you are trustworthy because you're talking to them as an actual human being behind the screen that they can go to if they have any questions or problems with their order. Number two then is to email your existing customers for feedback. This is a really important point. I'm gonna tie this in with point number four when we get to it, um, just to give you an example of what I mean. And then number three is asking groups slash friends and family for feedback. So before you start running ads, always ask for feedback. Now some groups won't let you, but in the group that I run, then you're I'm more than happy for you to join it as free and ask people what your feedback are. There's a great bunch of people in there that contribute to every post and they'll give you some points and tips to work on to ultimately help improve your store. And if you don't feel comfortable do that, then ask your parents, that's what I did when I started, ask your friends, family, etc. So point number four then is be honest and human with your customers. I can't emphasize how powerful this can be and how good it can make you look in front of your customers because so to tie this in with point number two as i said email cus existing customers for feedback so for example then you could email joe um, when he's received his item you could say hey joe it's jack here from um your business for your company name um, just a quick note a quick email to ask for advice in case you didn't know we're a new business we're looking to improve any feedback on our store on our site on our service would be more than welcomed with a reward of a five ten pound gift voucher and trust me that will make all the difference the biggest advantage we have over these big names like Amazon, um, Asos, all these big companies is that we can offer that personal touch. They won't get that. They won't get somebody reaching out and talking to them like a human being and saying, this is Jack, you can talk to me, have a great weekend, have a good day, whatever it is, they won't get that. So that extra human touch, I know it sounds silly, but trust me, it makes all the difference. So just be honest and human with your customers. And as the illustrations end at the bottom of the page show, Try not to focus on the money so much, but rather your customers. How can I make my customers happy? How can I give them a better service? Because a happy customer is one that will go away and tell their friends and family about you who will then come and shop with you. Yes, we live in a digital age, but the power of word of mouth is still powerful. Moving on to point number two then, 
another common mistake I see people making, which is picking broad products. So what I mean by broad products are products that don't have a specific audience on Facebook, therefore it becomes difficult to target a specific audience. As it says there, picking broad products makes it difficult to target a specific audience on Facebook. For example then, this product on the left here is what I like to call a passion product, because when you look at it, you know exactly who your ideal customer is, and it's a customer that's passionate about a certain subject or niche, which is obviously with this product on the left, German Shepherds. So I have a German Shepherd then with my girlfriend. She absolutely loves dogs. She loves German Shepherds. You should see our living room. It's just full of different German Shepherd plaques. I know for a fact that if this product here popped up on her newsfeed on Facebook, then she would 100% buy it because she's super passionate about them. Whereas this product on the right then, it has a ton of sales, something like 15,000 sales on AliExpress, but there's not gonna be many people out there that are passionate about sponge holders. So even though it has loads of sales, targeting a specific audience that would buy this, um, it's gonna be difficult to do on Facebook. Therefore, in my opinion, a product like this on the left is gonna be a lot easier to sell and see those sales initially, especially in the beginner stages. Now, I'm not trying to say that you can't sell products like this on the right successfully. What I'm trying to say is that as a beginner, it's easier to sell products that people are passionate about, especially in the beginning. And as a beginner, then in my opinion, it's all about motivation and seeing those initial results because they're what's gonna spur you on to continue doing this. Moving on to point number three then is no vision. When I talk to people, um, probably like 70, 80, even 90% of people just have no vision about where they're going, what they're doing or what they're trying to achieve. Too many people just put random products on their stores and start running ads without any clear goals or vision. And it's like fishing in the dark. Unless you know or see or have a plan of what you're doing, then how can you expect to, to achieve those end results? Everybody knows what their end result is. Is going to be they want to make 10 grand a month 20 grand a month 30 grand a month but it's between a and b in which they have no plan or strategy and that's where they go wrong so here's just a few points then to keep you on track and build that vision so ultimately you're always moving in the right direction so you must have a plan then of what products you're going to sell and when. The reason I put this in is because it's when I fell foul of in the beginning. I focused purely on trending products and for whatever reason I just forgot to remember that trending products at some point come to the end of their trend and all of a sudden I had a business that was making no money and I still had bills to pay every month so I had to sort something out pretty quick. Um, so what I'm saying then is that if you're drop shipping now, think about the kind of products you're selling and if they're trending for this time of year because it's getting dark, it's getting cold, Christmas is coming up, then what are you going to do in February time or March time when the weather starts changing, the clocks change, etc. Make sure you have the products lined up so you have a clear vision then of what products you're going to sell, when you're going to sell them, so you can consistently make money throughout the year. Point number two then, you must know what you want to achieve from dropshipping and match to that goal. So for example then, if you want to make a full-time living from dropshipping, which I believe probably most people watching this video do, then you need a quality store. If you want to do something full-time, you have to do it well. You can't do it half-assed, you can't have a crap store. You need a quality store, you need first-class customer service, you need content, and what I mean by content then is blog posts, or if you're in the kitchen, you need certain recipes to bring people onto your store. It's all about creating a brand and place for people to come, not necessarily just to buy things, but to hang out, to socialize, to read recipes, to get value for free. You need good products and you need to care about your customers, which we've covered in previous um, videos. As it says there, how can you make their experience better? The final point then, which is actually something a very wise man told me recently, is that if you give people what they want, they will give you what you want. So for example, then with your customers, if you give them a good product, good service at a good price, then they'll give you what you want. They'll come back and spend more money. They'll give you those referrals. They'll give you a good review. And that's point number three then. Moving on to point number four is no Facebook strategy. Um, so too many people then just run random ads hoping for sales and don't really know what to do if they don't get them. They don't know where to go or they'll just make their minds up that Facebook ads don't work or they're dropshipping some sort of scam, whatever it is. So here are some of the biggest mistakes then that I see people making when it comes to Facebook ads. Number one is spending their budget too broadly. So if you wanna test 20 ad sets, 20 different audiences, then just make sure you use micro budgets. Rather than go 10, 20, $30 a day and spend a ton of money, what you need to establish is are you testing 
testing or are you scaling? You're doing one of the two. So if you want to test 20 ad sets, then use micro budgets so you don't end, so you don't end up wasting a ton of money. Now this is just one strategy. Obviously, there's multiple different ways of going about this. So micro budgets then typically anything under two dollars per day. And then when you're going for sales, when you're actually trying to make money, when you're scaling, then it's so much better in my opinion to focus on less ad sets and bigger budgets. So instead of having 20 ad sets that you're trying to scale, that's going to cost you a ton of money. Um, then focus on say one, two or three ad sets at a time and dedicate say 20, 30, 40, 50 dollars, even a hundred dollars per day per one of these ad sets. So you don't end up wasting a ton of budget. So you don't become overwhelmed by taking on too much. Um, and so you have a better chance of succeeding too. Facebook is getting more and more competitive. There's more and more people spending money. So you need to account for that by spending more money competing with people. Facebook is a bidding platform, for example. And the two biggest factors then not to go off on a tangent is engagement on your ad and how much you're spending. Point number two then is not testing enough creatives. So if you've only ever tested one creative, then it's not enough to determine whether a product is successful or not, because it could be multiple different things. It could be the creative, could be the audience, could be the product itself. Um, so just make sure you test is at least three in my opinion, the more the better. Let's give you an example of how extensive some businesses do this. Go to other dropshipping sites, look at big blue chip companies, go and look at the ads they're currently running for their products. And sometimes they'll be running say 10 different creatives for the same product just to try and find out which one actually works. Number three then is targeting too broadly. So especially in the beginning, then quality over quantity in the beginning. Um, Facebook learns on who reacts to your site, who goes to your site, who performs certain actions. So the higher quality audience you can send to your store, then the better quality information Facebook has to learn from. So in the beginning, in my opinion, go for quality over quantity. Now, that's not to say you can't get good results by targeting absolutely massive audiences. Some people do, some people can. It's all about finding what works for you. However, what the sort of consistent strategy I've always adopted in the beginning is this premise here, is go for a quality audience in the beginning. And once you have that established amount of sales, then you can start scaling out into the broader audiences. So that's number four. Point number five then, and probably the most important point from this presentation, if there's one point or key thing you take away, please let it be this one, which is people have no patience nowadays. And the reason this is so important then is because in my opinion, being good at Facebook ads or any social media marketing uh, method for that matter is one of the most, if not the most valuable skill in the world if you want to make money. Put it this way, if you can prove to people that you can bring in more money, then it will cost them to hire you as a Facebook marketer. You can get a job anywhere in the world. You can walk into any business in the world. I can pretty much guarantee this. You can walk into pretty much any business in the world and they will hire you because why would they not want to? Businesses at the end of the day um, want to make more money. So if you can prove to them, you can make them more money than what it will cost to hire you, then why wouldn't they do so? It's a guaranteed investment. With that being said then, if it was easy to get good at it, then everybody would be doing it. Everybody would be running agencies from beaches on the world or dropshipping sites. So it takes practice and it takes time. Don't just spend money randomly because that is not gonna make you a better marketer. You have to make sure that when you're spending money, you're learning. If you're not earning, then you're learning if that makes sense. So here's a few points then of the sorts of things you need to be asking yourself to make sure that you're learning when you're spending money on Facebook. So if your ad set failed, then you need to know why did it fail so you can improve. So be constantly reviewing your ads um, and improving. So what's the quality ranking poor? If so, what does that mean? So Facebook will give you a quality ranking. If it's poor, look at what a quality ranking is and then know why it's poor. So is it because the ad creative is rubbish and nobody wants to watch it? Is it because it the, the product's rubbish and nobody's interested in it? Is it because there's no current engagement on the ad so people don't see it as trustworthy? What's the cost per link click high? If so, then why? Why would nobody want to click the link on your ad? Is it because it's not clear enough where it is? Is it again because the products nobody wants? Is it because you're advertising to a poor audience, etc.? And then the third and final point, say your ads are doing well, you're getting high traffic and no sales, then why not? So the job of your Facebook ads is to drive traffic to your store. So if you're getting a high amount of traffic, then essentially your Facebook ads are doing really well. The problem obviously lies on your store. If people are going to your store and not purchasing, then obviously there's a problem on your store. So what's the problem? Is your product too expensive? Is it too cheap? Have you got spelling mistakes? It could be a multitude of just different reasons. The key word from this slide is the why. Just make sure you understand the why and that's gonna put you in good stead for constantly improving 
and ultimately getting to that point where you can make money consistently with Facebook ads. And with that being said then guys, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please make sure you hit that like button. Please leave that comment down below as well. We'll get back to you, whatever it is. Um, and just a few different things then before you head off and before we announce the winner of the one-to-one -one call is that follow me on Instagram. I post on there every single day. It's at Jack Kitchener 458. Um, check out the free eBooks in the video description down below. There's five different ones, all in different aspects of your dropshipping business. Um, and they've had some really good feedback. So yeah, check them out, download them, they're 100% free um, and let me know what you think. And that being said then, let's get into announcing the winner of the one-to-one -one call. So here we are then on my previous video, what can we learn from these $1 million dropshipping stores? So if you haven't seen that video yet, please do go and check it out. There's some pretty cool information, some pretty cool stores in that video in fact. Anyway, we're here to announce the winner. So I'm just gonna take the link, head over to the random comment picker, 54 unique comments, which is I think a record in fact. So thank you very much, that is absolutely awesome. And the winner then of the previous video is Jim. So thank you very much, Jim, for your comment. Hit me up on, Dim on Instagram and we can get that call arranged. And guys, if you just wanna get straight down to business and book a call right away, you can do so. Just make sure you check out the links in the video description below. And with that being said, thanks again for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one.